begin, as always, with the Geico first half highlights. London Stadium, we pick it up, 11th man, Danny. Yeah, and Sheffield United early on, they gave as good as they got. The most got a helping hand from Dawson. See, he goes up with Fabianski. Unfortunately, from West Ham's perspective, he goes the wrong side of the post, but nearly chance Sheffield United. But then West Ham, they started to get more involved and more of a grip of the game. He was on the counter-attack, Lingard with a good shot. Good save from Ramsdale. And we see once again Sheffield United doing the attacking, but two versus two, and Lingard manages to face up Egan here, gets the better of him. You can see he just stands him up, that touch of his right foot opens a space for him, and it's comfortable enough to save for Ramsdale. Lingard just continued to be dangerous. Helped in the goal because it's sloppy play from Sheffield United. He's transition, and you see West Ham breaking with numbers. Exchange of passes between Lingard and Bowen, and it's passing who comes a long way, and it's an easy decision. He gets a yellow call because he is attempting to play the ball, but you see there, as the ball turns over here, it's all... David Moyes knew who he wanted to <laughs> take, Absolutely, Doug and yeah. Rice buried it. Sheffield United, their side. Familiar feeling? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same old story for them, and they've had their opportunities, and this is the thing when you're talking about them. You look at Sheffield United, yes, they are rooted to the bottom of the, of the table, but this performance has been reminiscent of so many performances this season where they've held their own, they've been competitive, We'll give credit to West Ham as well, I think, because they've allowed Sheffield United to have more of the ball. And we saw as the game went on, and in particular with the goal, it was a counter-attack from West Ham, and, you know, they've got their trust rewards. Another problem is you go forward, you're down, and mm. we talked about this in the pregame. You need someone to step up and score, and where's that goal coming from? Exactly. If, if you look at the game today, both teams are playing a similar system, three at the back with, with wing bats pushing on. Sheffield United have had really good build-up play. Everywhere till you get to the last third of the pitch, Luke's... OK, doesn't look like a team who bottom of the league or struggling for confidence, but as soon as they get round the box, they've, they haven't got the, the quality of pass, they haven't got the shortness of, of movement, and what they do have is options. You've got McBurney, who's physical. You've got Ollie Burke, who's quick. You've got Bruce, who has got all this potential we don't know. At some point, he might have to make a change. Somebody's got to deliver something in the attacking third of the pitch. you expect a change sooner rather than later here? <sighs> Potentially. I, I think the, the one problem that you have... So you look at McBurney, he's one that can come on because what Sheffield United have done well, they've got 2v1 down the sides. So they've got Basham and Bogle going against Johnson and down the other side, Sufeld's had to deal with Osborne and he's had to deal with, um, I'm trying to think, Stevens going there as well. So they're getting balls into the box. But as Robbie said, they need to get more plays into the box and that's where McBurney could come into it. All right, Sheffield United down.